Chromium is a really surprisingly exciting element. We've had real fun in the lab and we've had volcanoes, fires, Neil nearly caught fire. You're going to see some quite exciting things and also, I hope, learn something about the chemistry of this really interesting element. It's played a big role in my life, particularly in my research, ever since I've been a schoolboy. Chromium is element number 24 in the middle of the so-called transition metals in the first row. It was first discovered, or rather its first compounds were discovered, in the middle of the 18th century in mines in the Ural Mountains in eastern Russia. One of the minerals that was discovered was a very bright yellow pigment, lead chromate. You can make it in the lab by dropping ammonium dichromate, and we'll show you another interesting reaction of that later, dropping a solution of ammonium dichromate, which is orange, into a beaker containing lead acetate, which is colourless, well, slightly cloudy. And you get this fantastically bright yellow precipitate formed. It used to be called chrome yellow and be used as a paint. Now people don't really want to use lead salts in paints, but you can still see this terrific colour. It's important to say that even for chemists like me, to see this reaction yet again is really exciting, and particularly because the formation in the beaker is governed by the swirling of the liquid and the mixing. And you see really beautiful patterns, and it always gives me a thrill. Then, in the later 18th century, a French chemist, Louis Vaugelin, discovered that you could convert chrome yellow into an oxide of chromium, chromium trioxide, by treating it with acid. Later, he reacted this oxide with hydrogen to make chromium metal and discovered the element. I think it's just worth mentioning that the reason that so many elements were discovered at the end of the 18th century, beginning of the 19th century, is that's when the idea, or the modern idea, of chemical elements was first formulated. So before then, people were not looking for chemical elements, and once the idea was formulated, a whole mass of elements were found relatively quickly. While we're talking about chromium trioxide, it's one of my favourite compounds. You may have seen an earlier video where I set off all the fire alarms in the chemistry department by mistake with chromium trioxide and ethanol. You Is can the smoke alarm off? Yeah. No. They were meant to put it off. You forgot to switch it off. Cameras have got better and I persuaded Neil to try this reaction himself. You pour ethanol, which is a compound of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, onto chromium trioxide, which is a compound of chromium where the chromium has given all its electrons to the oxygen. It is a very powerful oxidising agent. It makes things burn and it really made the ethanol burn. Poor Neil's beaker caught fire. He should have known, perhaps, that it would. If he'd watched my video, he would have got the warning. <laughs> the reaction not only produces flames, but it converts the chromium trioxide into a different oxide of chromium, where there are some electrons on the chromium, and it is bright green. It is so-called chromium-2, oxygen-3. Some people call it chromium sesquioxide. You are joking. And the flames all went on our GoPro camera. But I'm pleased to say the GoPro camera was not injured, so it'll survive for our next video. <laughs> this brings us back to the name chromium which is derived from the Greek word meaning a colour, and you've heard of monochromatic and words like that, and chromium forms the most amazing range of different coloured compounds. You've already seen it going from red to green, and you can get 
almost any colour you want. And the reason that it has all these different colours is because as a transition metal, it has 4d electrons and 2s electrons, so that's six electrons, and in different compounds it gives different number of electrons to the neighbouring atom, and the colours are associated with the energy levels of the electrons that are left on the chromium atom. So you have different numbers of electrons and the energy levels can also differ depending on the atoms around it. If the energy levels are far apart, they will absorb blue light and so the compound will look red. If the energy levels are close together, they will absorb red light and look blue. You can see a really nice colour change when you drop sodium chromate into acidified hydrogen peroxide. The chromate liberates the oxygen from the hydrogen peroxide and part of the chromate is reduced, that is, it receives electrons and so the chromium goes to a greenish colour. Now when you actually look at the experiment, what Neil did was that he took a dropper full of the chromate solution and stuck it at the bottom of the beaker and then squeezed it so the chromate solution went in the bottom. It reacted immediately going a sort of greenish brown colour which if you looked very carefully you will see is actually a mixture of a blue compound and a green one but the oxygen that is liberated the bubbles go up to the surface and as it goes up it takes up streams of this coloured liquid so you have quite a strange, almost like a garden growing. And again, for me as a chemist, it's really exciting to see how these things behave. You can't predict exactly what's going to happen, so every experiment is exciting. In the past, we've done this reaction before, where we did it the other way around, pouring hydrogen peroxide into chromate solution. And there you do get quite dramatic colour changes and as I mentioned a professor that I knew blew off two of his fingers with this reaction. So you've got to be careful. Neil did one other really spectacular reaction with the ammonium dichromate. Now ammonium which is NH4 plus if you think about it contains hydrogen which can burn and on the other hand it has chromate which can give up oxygen. So if you like it's got both the oxidant and the fuel all in one compound. The bottle says, careful, explosive. And Neil heated this up in a nice round bottom flask, quite a sizable flask. And when the reaction takes off, it takes quite a bit of heating to get it going, then it looks just like a volcano because you have the green chromium oxide being formed, which looks a bit like lava, and the flames shooting up. All three of us, Brady, me and Neil, were really quite impressed by that reaction. Unfortunately, the filter that Neil used at the top wasn't strong enough thermally to resist the heat. It caught fire and then it melted. But apart from that, the reaction was quite a success. Chromium plating was used very widely in the United States in the car industry, the automobile industry, and with expensive cars were covered in chromed components so they looked really shiny and silver. Nowadays people are trying to save weight on cars and you don't use metal for the bumpers and things like that so there's almost no chrome plating on cars. Let me tell you about chromium in my research, I've worked for many years with this compound chromium hexacarbonyl, chromium with six CO groups around it. If you isolate it in a solid at a very low temperature, minus 250 degrees, you can irradiate UV light on it and generate chromium pentacarbonyl, chromium with five CO groups around it, which is enormously reactive and would react immediately and disappear if it was not frozen at such low temperature. And at that sort of low temperature, it will re even react with argon, 
we all think as argon as a really inert gas. My fellow student, Robin Perutz, discovered it would react with argon and form a really nice purple colour. I reproduced his experiment for my first lecture that I gave outside my own university. I still show the slide 43 years on. The lecture was a bit of a disappointment. There was a Nobel Prize winner, Sir George Porter, who was meant to be there, but it turned out he had another engagement, so I never saw him at the lecture. It then turned out that CrCO5 will react with xenon. I and my colleague Jim Turner, my professor, um, published the first paper in which crco 5 xenon was discovered in solution. And now this is still a major research area at Nottingham and my colleague Mike George is using very fast spectroscopy to look at metal xenon compounds. Most school teachers don't know that xenon will react with transition metals, but it's now quite a widespread phenomenon. When I was a schoolboy, age 16, I passed my exams a year earlier than my classmate, so I was allowed to do a research project all by myself. Wouldn't be allowed nowadays. For reasons I couldn't remember now, I decided to look at the reaction of copper chromate and ammonia. For nostalgia's sake, I asked Neil to repeat this experiment, taking copper sulphate, which is a blue solution, adding to it a solution of sodium chromate, and you get a rather sort of muddy precipitate. It doesn't look at all appetizing. And then if you add ammonia, it goes dark blue if you haven't mixed it up properly, like Neil hadn't, and then it goes green. Now, what I want you to see from this experiment is it's a pretty messy experiment. And it was completely mad for me as a schoolboy to try and study this reaction. But I re did it with great determination. I never really discovered anything important, but it did really hook me on doing chemical research. And I've been doing it nearly ever since. I was so devoted to this reaction, I had a rack of test tubes with these different samples above my, on the shelf above my bed in my bedroom. I'm not sure what my parents thought of this. Hi there everyone, as this is the first video we've posted since passing one million subscribers, I thought I'd take this opportunity to thank everyone who's watching periodic videos. A special thanks to everyone who subscribes. A special, special thanks to everyone who's used the little notification bell with their subscription. A special, special, special thanks to everyone who supports us on Patreon. There's an address on the screen. Also, if you're someone who's gotten into watching podcasts, I thought I might tell you I actually have two podcasts. I do one with a fellow YouTuber called CGP Grey. You may have heard of him, and our podcast is called Hello Internet. And there's a second podcast I do, a newer one, called The Unmade Podcast, that I do with an old friend of mine called Tim. The names of them are on the screen. You can find links in the video description, or just search Hello Internet or The Unmade Podcast on your podcast player of choice. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again here soon.